Hello Math Learners! Welcome to another session here in Math Learning with Sir Ash. This is still your free access math teacher Ash and today we're going to discuss how to illustrate polynomial functions. You will know about the basics of polynomial functions and the constraints whether a polynomial is said to be a polynomial and the different types of polynomial functions. So tune in, relax and finish this video. But before anything else, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for you to be updated of these cool clear math videos just like this. Hello Math Learners! Welcome to another session here in Math Learning with Sir Ash. And today, we're going to discuss the most essential learning competency-based lesson for quarter 2 of the grade 10 mathematics, which is all about how to illustrate polynomial functions. But before talking about polynomial functions, the first question is, what is a polynomial? Polynomial comes from the Greek word poly and nominal. Poly means many and nominal means terms. Therefore, if we put the two meanings together, polynomial means many terms. Okay, now basically polynomials are expressions in algebra. It has constants, variables, and exponents. Basically, constants are those fixed values. The variables are the letters from A to Z. And the exponents are those literal numbers that are being a superscript in the given variables such as x squared, x cubed, and x to the fourth. Now, when can we say that a given expression is a polynomial? There are four needs you need to consider. These four things, if ever you see this in a given expression, then that given expression is not a polynomial. What are these four things? Okay, this is known as the four constraints. Or four violations. If this is being acquired in a given expression, then that is not a polynomial. The first one is known as the um, variable with a negative exponent. Okay. Variable with a negative exponent. Number two, a variable with a rational exponent it means that the exponent of the variable is a fraction okay number three a variable in the denominator side so if you see expressions and there is a variable in the denominator side then that is not a polynomial and finally a variable in the radical sign if you can see a variable inside the radical symbol then that is not a polynomial okay having said this let us now try to illustrate polynomials okay math learners we have here 10 examples and what we need to do here is to describe whether the given expressions are polynomials or not okay now first is 5x is that a polynomial okay that is a polynomial because it has a constant and a variable okay next number two x squared minus two square root of x plus 5x that is very good that is not a polynomial because of this given term in which the variable is inside the radical sign Okay, next, we have here negative 2021x. That is a polynomial. Very good because it's just an integer and a variable. We have here x to the power of 2 thirds plus 3x plus 2x. That is not a polynomial because of this exponent 2 thirds which is a rational number. We have here 1 over x minus 2 over x squared plus 3 over x cubed. That is, of course, that is not a polynomial because the variable is in the denominator side. Next, number 6, we have pi. Is pi a polynomial? 
Of course, pi is a constant value. Therefore, this can be said as a polynomial. Now for number 7, we have 3x to the power of square root of 2 plus 3x squared. So what is this? This is not a polynomial because our exponent is a non-integer and that is square root of 2. Now, for sure, that is not here in our constraints but remember, in our um, definitions of a polynomial function, the exponents should not be a negative or non-integer number. Okay? So it could be a zero or a positive integer but not a rational number or non-integer. Okay? Very easy, my dear math learners. We have here x cubed plus 2x plus 1. Of course, that is a polynomial. And finally, we have negative 2x to the power of negative 3 plus x cubed. And that is not a polynomial because we have the exponent negative 3. So for sure, it is very easy for you to know how to describe whether an expression is a polynomial or not. Now, let us go to our definition of what is a polynomial function. Okay, math learners. Now, the next question is, what is a polynomial function? Now, polynomial function can be described in many ways. Why? Because it has a lot of types based on its degree and the number of terms. The polynomial function is basically a polynomial but it uses two variables. Meaning, if earlier we were discussing about one variable, and that is x, to become a polynomial function, a polynomial needs to have a counterpart, which is the function of x, or also known as the y variable. So basically, a polynomial function is denoted as p of x is equal to the polynomial expression. Okay, so... So therefore, there is an equate or it is being equated into a function of x or the p of x in this matter. Okay? Now, talking about polynomial function, it is composed of three things. The first is the leading term, the leading coefficient, and the degree. Uh, basically, it has a lot of terms as we know that polynomial means many terms or it has one term. It depends. Okay? So, if it is one term, that is monomial. If it is two term, um, binomial. If three term, trinomial. And if four, four or more term, that is multinomial. But the umbrella of these different terms is known as polynomial. Now, what are the different polynomial functions? Or what are the types of polynomial functions? Okay. So, as what I've said earlier, um, the types of polynomial function is based on its degree. Now, the question is, what is a degree? Degree is the highest exponent in the given polynomial function. So, basically, we are talking about the variable x, right? And the highest exponent in the given terms, or the, the following terms, the highest exponent is what we call the degree. So, example, if you have a degree of 0, that is known as the zero polynomial function. Okay? The example of that is what we just had earlier, the pi. Because pi don't have any variable x. So therefore, that is known as the zero polynomial function. Now, if you have a one degree, meaning x to the power of one, which is basically written as x, that is known as the linear polynomial function. Known as the linear equations in our previous Years. If you have 2, or degree of 2, meaning the highest exponent is in the second power, or squared, that is known as the quadratic polynomial function. Okay? Example of that is the quadratic functions in the grade 9 lessons. Okay. Then, if you go to the third degree, you will have the cubic polynomial function. In the fourth degree, you have the quartic polynomial function. And if you have in the fifth degree, you have the quintic polynomial function. Basically, there are more, but somehow, um, these are the most common 
types of polynomial functions. So the zero, the linear, the quadratic, the cubic, the quartic, and the quintic polynomial functions. So how do we know that a given um, function or the given polynomial function is quadratic, quintic, cubic, quartic, or um, zero? So basically, we will consider some examples later on. As what I've said earlier, um, another part of a polynomial function is known as the leading coefficient and the leading term. Okay. The leading coefficient and the leading term. Now, the leading coefficient basically is the number or the coefficient of the variable with the highest degree. So, that is known as the leading coefficient. While the leading term is the actual term where the degree is being found. So, that includes the variable with the degree and its leading coefficient. So, the whole is known as the leading term. Now, let us consider some examples. Okay, math learners, we have here two examples. And these two examples are polynomial functions because it has y and another and the counterpart of another variable, which is x. And then it also have the function of x and the x variable. Okay, so that is a function. And this is a polynomial function. Now, the first question is, what type of function is this? So basically, what is the highest degree here? So the degree here is 4, because that is the highest exponent. Okay, so if the degree is 4, then this is known as a quartic polynomial function. How about the second example? The degree is, of course, that is 3. So the degree is 3. So therefore, this polynomial function is known as a cubic polynomial function. Now, how about knowing the leading Coefficient. Okay, what is the leading coefficient? So, where do we see our degree 4 here? Okay, this is our degree 4. So, the degree 4 is here. The leading coefficient is the number beside the variable. And that is positive 8. How about here? What is the leading coefficient in this second equation? So, we have here our degree. That is power of 3. So, the leading coefficient is basically the negative 7 so therefore the leading coefficient is negative 7 now what is the leading term so the leading term is the whole term itself where you can see the degree and the leading coefficient so the degree is here the coefficient is here and this is the whole term therefore our leading term is 8x to the power of 4 easy right and here in the second example this is our degree this is our coefficient so the whole term is negative 7 x to the power of 3 easy right so basically in learning how to illustrate polynomial function first you need to know that the given is a polynomial and for you to know what is a polynomial you need to see the four constraints and if they have committed those four constraints then that is not a polynomial hence you don't need to name the leading coefficient the polynomial function and others but if it is a polynomial then you need to see what is the degree of that or the highest exponent of that given function and that will let you know what type of polynomial function you have. And you can also know how to name the leading term and the leading coefficient. Okay, math learners, I hope you have a wonderful time about our introduction on polynomial functions. This is still your free access math teacher, Ash. And if you have some questions and inquiries about our topic, don't hesitate to put your inquiries in our comment section below. I hope you can share this to your fellow classmates, schoolmates, and teachers. Hope you can also use this video presentation or video tutorial in teaching your students. Always remember, it is fun to learn mathematics if we are together learning. Thank you so much. God bless and keep safe always.
Congratulations, math learners, for arriving to this part of the video. If you think that this video have helped you, click that like button. And if you think that this channel can change the way you see mathematics, do not forget to click that subscribe button and notification bell. Thank you.